Many thanks for staying with Citizen Weekend. Well, as earlier mentioned, plastic surgery is on the rise. Tonight in studio, Dr. Aidan Abdullahi, consultant plastic surgeon and lecturer at the University of Nairobi Department of Surgery, tells us just what this trend is all about. Dr. Aidan Karibusana, thank you so oh, much thank for you, your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay, yeah. great. Mm. So let's begin with the quest for the perfect body, Dr. Aidan. Is there anything like a perfect body? Well, there's actually nothing like perfect body. Uh, you can have uh, uh, all sorts of bodies, but there's nothing like perfect body. Uh -huh. You could just have the normal body. Yeah. So I would call uh, a body as a normal body, but there's nothing like the perfect body. The okay. perfect body is, is relative. The word perfect probably is relative with mm -hmm. respect to the human body. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the reason I ask that, Dr. Aidan, is because um, with the showbiz culture, and with uh, women, you know, in Hollywood having the perfect bodies, even after childbirth and even after, um, even after aging, um, you find that a lot of younger women have an idea of what they want to look, th to look like, hence the reconstructive surgery. So what qualifies a person for reconstructive surgery? Well, before someone walks into to the clinic, for example, and asks for uh, some, some form of reconstructive surgery or, or aesthetic surgery, uh, the person has to ha go through a certain series of history questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't just walk in and ask, I want to have this done. I mean, there has to be a reason for it. Uh, for example, if a young lady or a middle-aged woman who's about 45 years old, 50 years old, has finished her family, and she's been exercising, for example, for about three, four years, consistently, you know, and I must say exercise is very important, and she's got this stubborn belly, which has refused to go away. Uh, that can be attributed to anatomy. I mean, d during the childbirth or during pregnancy, mm -hmm. there's stretch of, of an important uh, structure called the rectus sheath. So when it gets stretched, uh, you always have this difficulty in getting your tummy back to your pre-pregnancy pre level. Mm -hmm. And therefore, probably a procedure will, will, will help in, uh, in, in correcting that issue. Okay. Of course, besides that, due to hormonal imbalances, mm -hmm. you have deposition of fat around the, the, the central part of the body, okay. despite the fact that you've been exercising. And I must emphasize again that exercise is very important. Mm -hmm. It's only that we've got this stubborn, resistant, you know, quote-unquote uh, type of fat, okay. which refuse to go away. And probably that one, maybe one of these procedures might come in okay. uh, to assist. And let's talk about the procedures. And I'll ask uh, my graphics team to just go back mm. so that we can see some of the before and after images. And this, for example, Dr. Aidan, is a liposuction. Let's talk about this procedure and why somebody would opt for this. Well, someone will opt for this because uh, the particular person has been trying exercise for a very long period of time and uh, would really want to get rid of this stubborn fat. Mm -hmm. And uh, after some time, after trial, they would want to walk in and ask for, is there anything I can do for this, uh, uh, to get rid of this fat? Mm -hmm. And a lipoaspiration or liposuction procedure, a very less uh, aggressive procedure called liposuction, would, would, uh, will, get, will, will suck off all this fat and get so you back to... So it's a process of suction? Uh, it's a process of, uh, we use a tumescent solution mm -hmm. uh, to sort of uh, reduce blood loss, uh, melt the fat away and, uh, you know, introduce special cannulas. And of course, you've got to know where to place those cannulas so that you don't injure the internal structures okay. and the intestines and the And yeah. what would you advise a woman to do? Is this advisable before or after childbirth? Well, ideally, after childbirth. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll really be advisable. And you've finished your family. However, mm -hmm. we've got this uh, with liposuction alone, without tummy tuck or lipoabdominoplasty, when there's a combination of liposuction and abdominoplasty. That means liposuction and tummy tuck combined. Uh, if you just do liposuction alone, there's no harm. You could still have a uh, pregnancy um, w without any sequelae or any problem. Mm -hmm. But if you've got time attack, we will we'll always advise you to wait for, for some time and probably wait uh, until childbirth. However, that's a relative contraindication. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and how does the skin retract after such a procedure? Well, the skin has got a substance called elastin. Uh, it's the main component in the skin that uh, retracts uh, after you've removed the content beneath the skin, the subcutaneous tissue called the okay. fat. Mm -hmm. So once you've removed all that, uh, you remain with the skin, a redundant skin. Ideally, it should ret retract back. Now we've got machines which are able to assist in, in, in re uh, retracting the, the skin back to, to, to the muscle mm -hmm. after you've removed the, the, the fat. But you've got to be young. I mean, if you're a young person with enough elastin, that will be very good. But if, you've, if you're an elderly person over 50 or 48, uh, I wouldn't say elderly, 50, I mean, let's say over 60, uh -huh. then probably that skin will remain redundant there and a form of excision 
will be ideal for that matter. Meaning a tummy tuck then? Probably, yes, be. exactly. Okay. But just, just, just to add on to that, mm -hmm. in, in, in abdominoplasty, uh, you'll have to strengthen the muscles inside because they're all lax, you know, after pro, uh, multi -para, after a woman has, has had women for, I mean, children for some time. Mm -hmm. So you've got to really tighten all that for some time and make sure that uh, uh, you've got a tight internal part. Let me put it. A rectus diastasis is, is a, a form of a honey. I wouldn't call it exactly honey, mm -hmm. but it's a form of a honey whereby your internal content, like your intestines and the rest, are able to bulge out. So if you tighten all that, you, you won't be able to have any problem. And then, you know, you, you close up after creating the flap. You, 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 you resect the redundant flap all the way below the belly button. Okay. Right. I want to move to another area of concern for a lot of women and men as well because um, you find some women, some women either want breast enlargement or um, want to reduce their breast size. And some men as well um, tend to have, um, well, not breasts as such, but want to have... Um, Sort of a, flat a, chest. a flatter chest. Oh, okay. um, so let's talk about this procedure. Um, and of course, this is the before and after. Again, uh, Dr. Aiden, and what it involves. Well, uh, let's start with the latter one with the, with the men. You, because of hormonal imbalances, again, one, because of some men use androgen, <coughs> uh, metabolic uh, androgens, you know, they want to build up their body. Uh -huh. Or some men have been using alcohol for a very long period of time, they are, they've got liver injuries or men who have been using marijuana, for example, uh -huh. or anybody with, with a liver problem, they would then end up having uh, a feminine kind of, uh, of, 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 of mammary gland, just right. like that of, of a female. Uh -huh. And there'll be deposition of fat just behind the nipple areola complex, or, you know, uh, where the nipple is. And the man will tend to have a, a tissue uh, similar to that of, of the female. We do what, what we call my, male gynecomastia. So we were able to do a liposuction, remove that, and, and you know, uh, reconstruct that and give him back uh, the way it has been. Uh -huh. However, we've got to find out why it happened initially. Do a thorough examination to ensure that there is no primary cause for that. Only then you, you'll go ahead for that. And Coming for back to the far, for the women, uh -huh. of course, we've got two types. We've got the breast enlargement and breast uh, reduction. Uh -huh. In our African society, we've got the, the bigger problem is actually the breast uh, being big. So okay. you, you need to reduce it. And a, a patient will walk in with symptoms of headache consistently, you know, for about 10 years. A patient has been taking uh, Brufen, Panadol, you know, to relieve her neck pains, her uh -huh. back aches, uh -huh. and all that. Some of them have changed their posture, and they're literally, you know, looking down, and I've got a stupa posture with a scoliosis of their cervical spine. Uh -huh. uh, those kind of women, reducing the, the, the glandular tissue of the breast surgically, will be able to, to, to relieve uh, all these symptoms, and, 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 and they'll get back their life uh, to normality. Uh -huh. Uh, for the enlargement? For, for the enlargement, of course, that's probably the one which most ladies would want to have. This is basically uh, done in two aspects. One, if you want to have it done because you've had m uh, multiple pregnancies and you've, de you've delivered, you, you've had breastfeeding for some time, and you know the tissues of atrophied have, have, have decreased and you've got a dropping, if, if, if you feel that you're not comfortable with it, I'm not saying it's a treatment, I mean, if you're, if you're not comfortable with it, then maybe you'll have to have it lifted up. The two ways to lift it up, one is by implant, you can put it behind the muscle, a muscle which you call pectoralis major muscle, mm -hmm. or you can put it in front of the muscle. Mm -hmm. The other way is by fat grafting, use your own fat, okay, autologous fat, and you know, graft it into the breast tissue mm -hmm. so that you've got your previous uh, 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 breast uh, size. However, these are these are choices. Yes. These are not treatments. What I want to ask ab is, is about the silicone, uh, uh, Dr. Aiden. Um, if I still want to have a baby after having silicone put into my breast, am I still able good to question. breastfeed? Yeah, that's, that? that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got this, one in five ladies will not be able to breastfeed. One in five ladies will not be able to breastfeed. Uh, if you place these implants behind the muscle, you're not interfering with the, with, with the ducts, the milk ducts. So you'll be able to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can do a dual plane. You know, you put 70% of the upper pole behind the muscle mm -hmm. and 30% uh, in front of the muscle. Okay. And you'll be able to still breastfeed. However, mm -hmm. one out of five mm -hmm. will not be able to breastfeed. Let me also put it this way that breastfeeding is mandatory. Yes. It's advisable mm -hmm. and there's no substitute to it. And women should breastfeed. Okay. Yeah. And I want to talk about African skin, Dr. Aidan, which yeah. is more prone to um, keloids yeah. and hypertrophic scars. Yeah. And how then to manage that after procedures such as these, the liposuction, mm. the tummy tucks, yeah, yeah. Uh, the breast implants, yeah. which will involve a bit of incision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how to manage such scars well, and, and just have a seamless yeah, healing process? Yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah. So what, what happens is when you do these surgical incisions, 
after closure, whatever procedure you're doing, uh, the African skin is prone to develop uh, scars which are much more conspicuous than that of the Caucasian, for example. So you'll be able to have huge scars, or you'll be able, you can even have keloids or hypertrophic scar. It's important the doctor or the physician, the plastic surgeon, mm -hmm. takes a good history. If you're prone to that, then you'll have to undergo through what's called scar management to make it as, le as, 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 as less conspicuous as possible. And that can be done with, uh, with, with injections and a couple of uh, scar management uh, adhesives that, that are used. Mm -hmm. However, even the type of suturing done during the final closure after your procedure determines the quality of the scar mm -hmm. or, or, or on the human body, particularly the black skin. Okay, Dr. Aidan, before I move to, mm -hmm. to another <coughs> critical yeah. um, issue altogether, which is burns, yeah. um, I want to talk about um, plastic surgery as a whole and mm -hmm. this whole aesthetic surgery would you say that exercise is a better option um, or perhaps is this the trend well, let that me tell you the that. country is moving towards uh, let me tell you exercise will and will always be is and will always be the better option exercise is not only for the body it's all for the it, it helps the internal organs you're able to get rid of many diseases you're, you're able to prevent a lot of diseases so exercise is a must if a patient walks into my office for example the first question I'll ask is, have you done exercise? Yeah. yeah. Question number two, if I don't exercise after, for instance, a liposuction, which totally makes my, my, my tummy flat, mm -hmm. does that mean that the chances of me getting that bulge back are, are higher, and will it be worse than it was before well, if I don't exercise? Initially, we'll have to really counsel you and talk to you. If we've done a good job on you and given you a very good uh, results, and you're very happy with it, surely it'll be unfair for both the performer, the sergeant, mm -hmm. as well as you, mm -hmm. to, to go back to a coach potato. Okay. lifestyle. I want to talk about uh, yet another procedure before mm. we move to the bands, yeah. Dr. Aiden, yeah. before I forget. There's this sagging skin, and uh, here, right here, this is mm. what I'm talking about. A lot of women deal, have to deal with this, yeah. even after exercise, even yeah. after living in the gym, yeah. literally. Yeah. I will be showing you that image mm. uh, shortly. Dr. Aiden, what can you do for that sagging skin that just won't go under the arms mm. even after hours and hours spent in the gym? Well, the best is, first of all, you go to liposuck that fat, and then after that, you'll have this sagging skin. You've got to resect it. And the procedure is called brachioplasty. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you resect it, uh, it shouldn't come back again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so still same liposuction. And then you resect the skin as well. Okay, and yeah. then you tuck the skin. Yeah. Okay. And of course, you place your, your, your incision uh, away from the external part, probably okay. on the middle or rather in the, in the inner part. So, yeah. Dr. Um, Aidan, mm -hmm. moving away from the vanity, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about burns yeah. um, and the fact that uh, mm -hmm. burns and wounds, um, you know, they are, um, of course, a phenomenon that a lot of people, particularly those that live in the lower mm -hmm. income earning areas, um, mm -hmm. s you know, the stove explosions yeah. and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of children, even in the burns unit in, in, in some of our national hospitals, yeah. Yeah. Um, what are you as plastic surgeons doing mm -hmm. for such cases? We, we've got an association called the Kenya Association of Plastic Surgeons, uh, CASPRAS. And I urge all the members of the public uh, to go and log into the website. We've, we've got also the Burn Society of Kenya. The aim of this is to reduce the immense mo mortality and mo morbidity associated with stove explosion, electrical burns due to wires hanging there. Huge numbers of, of, our, of our young people are dying and having uh, uh, amputations because of these burns. Stove explosions are born, and that's kerosene, mm -hmm. adulterated kerosene. So it's mainly common in the, in the slum areas. Yes. And uh, at the Kenyatta National Hospital, we are really burdened. It's, it's a big, big disease burden, both economically to the hospital and to the country, mm -hmm. as well as to the, to the, to, to the free staff that we have. Okay. So the best way will be prevention. And we intend to start a preventive program with the, with the, with the, with the Urban Society of Kenya, mm -hmm. together probably with the Kenya Power Lighting Company, that will be our major supporter. And we look for other, for other people who are interested in the corporate social responsibility. We go around mm -hmm. and, you know, reduce this burden on both our economy as well as on our people. Okay. Because it's a vicious circle. It's a, it's a poor man's disease, mm -hmm. but it's a vicious circle. However, it still occurs in the uh, well of uh, communities. Okay, and I just want to deviate your attention <coughs> yeah. just slightly away from yeah. the bands. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. If we mm. could have it uh, full screen, this is the brachioplasty that Dr. Aiden was talking about. And right there is a before and after. And this is, a lo this, this is, uh, is, is something that a lot of women actually aren't happy about. Um, and so there you go. Those, that is what brachioplasty 
is and there's the before and the after images and Dr. Aiden there explaining mm. that liposuction and a bit of a nip and tuck after that, of course I don't know the medical term for that, mm. <laughs> Dr. Aiden, um, mm. will actually take care of that. I want to talk about, um, as we wind up, Dr. Aiden, breast reconstruction after a mastectomy. Um, mm. uh, women um, that have, have lost their breasts um, to breast cancer and whether um, you know, you're able to reconstruct a breast mm to what it was like before, just to the exact yeah. feel and, of course, look of what it was like uh, before. Good. We, we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, ladies who have had mastectomy due to uh, tumors, breast cancer, and quite a number of them have, have achieved curative status, and they've got one side nothing, and the other side it's, it's very normal. So this can be reconstructed. You can use your own tissue, you know. Uh, you can swing a flap, a muscle we call latissimus dorsi, mm -hmm. and bring it up in front there. But on the other hand, if you're not interested in, in, in all that, you could still use uh, a tissue expander, get enough space and place an implant so that you've got symmetry of, the, of both breasts. And these are patients who have had curative stages. On the other hand, you could still use a fat graft, get your own fat and, you know, uh, uh, place it in front of the muscles and, you know, get a symmetry achieved uh, for, for both. So the fact that you've undergone mastectomy due to cancers of the breast does not mean that you can live like that. There's a second phase to the treatment. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can have a reconstructive procedure uh, you know, to get back your, uh, what the cancer has taken away from you. Okay. Yeah. And the million dollar question, Dr. Mm -hmm. Aidan, this is what everybody is asking the cost. Well, I'll be honest with you, if you, 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 you want to walk into a plastic surgeon's office and you want to do a, a, an aesthetic surgery or a cosmetic surgery, if you don't have the money, there's no point because it's not a disease. But if you really have the money, yeah, yes, you, you can have it sorted out. So you're saying it's Absolutely. super expensive. I mean, I'm not saying that it's super, super expensive. It's not something that should bother you if you, if you don't have enough money. Rough estimate. You get the point. Rough estimate. I want well, to I do think a liposuction mm, together yeah. with, of course, I, I mean, I'm coming in and I, I'm saying I don't want to <coughs> go to an, es a, um, an aesthetic, is that what you call it? Mm. Um, you know, countless times. So let's get rid of all of this at a go. I want to do my breasts, I want to, to flatten my tummy, um, I want to put the fat that you took <laughs> out of my tummy elsewhere, yeah, make okay. it more okay. round I mean, and nice. Those are what are we looking at? Give us a figure. We, we look, if you have got, you've got, to, you've got to do all those three at the same time, we're looking over about $10,000, I mean, about a million shillings plus. A million yeah. shillings. Okay, so it is yeah. an expensive mm. procedure. Mm. And finally, Dr. Adam, where it's, can it's, someone it's find really, It's really cheap compared to Europe and North America. I mean, okay. if you've got to do, for example, the lipoabdominoplasty, or tummy tuck, in, in London, for example, you end up paying about two million shillings. Mm -hmm. Well, in Kenya, we probably not even a million shillings. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, mm. wh and where can someone find well, you? Well, I, I practice most of my work at the current hospital, so mm -hmm. that's where I'm, I am. But I also urge the members of the public or anybody who's interested in, in burns, wounds, as well as in, in aesthetic surgery to log on to Kenya's session of plastic and reconstructive surgery, su uh, surgeons. There's a website there. I've got my colleagues there who equally are competent enough to do this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, of course, look up the I'll Kenya... I to mention that we, we've started a program, a uh, master's level at the University of Nairobi, where we train reconstructive surgeons as well as uh, uh, aesthetic surgeons. Okay. Right. So look up the Kenya Association of Plastic Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgeons website for more mm -hmm. info on that. Of course, if you want to uh, talk a little bit more to Dr. Aiden, you can follow him on his Twitter handle. It's at Dr. Abdullahi, Abdullahi Aden. Aden. Mm -hmm. It's at Dr. Abdullahi Aden. You can ask him all the questions you want mm -hmm. to ask regarding, of course, uh, plastic surgery on his Twitter handle, and he'll, he'll be glad to respond to your questions. Dr. Aden, thank you so, so yeah, much yeah, for your time. You. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. We're taking a short break now. Remember, the SMS number is 22422, or you can send in your questions using the hashtag one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be right back.